Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chimmy. I make videos every week. Now, my videos every week are usually very different. They're not the same at all. However, the ultimate goal is to add value to you. Today, I wanted to talk about YouTube 101. If you've ever been interested in starting a YouTube channel but you didn't really know where to start, this is your best place. There are quite a lot that I want to talk about, so I've divided it into four different categories. These are the absolute basics that you must know if you want to start a YouTube channel. I've divided into four different parts because there's too much to cover and I won't be able to do it in one video without you getting bored. The first part will be about email ID. The second one will be about equipment that you need. The third one will be editing. I use Final Cut Pro, so this is going to be about Final Cut Pro. And the fourth one will be your YouTube content, calendar planning. I've split it into four parts so it's easier for you to follow and cope up. And this is all I'm going to talk about in each week. So if you miss one part, you can go back or you can go forward and look at the other one. These are not full-blown teaching at all. It's not A to Z on how to edit or A to Z on equipment and how to use each and every one of those equipments or how to use an app entirely for YouTube content planning. It's just my experience. It's things that I have learned the hard way. I find that there are a lot of guides for you on YouTube itself and on Google on how to start a YouTube channel, but sometimes people don't really talk about these basics. So I've learned it the hard way and I want to make it easy for you. So I'm sharing it with you now. These are tips and tricks that you won't find anywhere else at all. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out every other week or every other part that I upload. Even when I make recommendations for something, I will leave the link to everything on the description box below so it's easier for you to find it. Part 4 of my YouTube 101 is YouTube content calendar and planning. There are four parts to this. Find your niche, plan your content, plan your timing and tools to track your work. Finding your niche is extremely important to grow on YouTube. Even if it's not to grow, you need a purpose, you need a plan as to how and what you're going to do on YouTube. Otherwise, you won't have any focus at all. Try and pin down your niche. What is it that you're good at? What do you want to talk about to people? What do you want to share with other people? The very purpose of YouTube is to add value to others and to help and support others. So what is it that you have that can add value to other people? There are a lot of things out there on YouTube at the moment. I wouldn't say the competition is quite high. It's just that everyone is different. There is only one you and there is something that you can bring to the table that others can't. So what is that one thing that you want to share with others? It's extremely important to finalize that. Figure out your style. Figure out what kind of videos you want to make. Do you want to be the next Jay Shetty? Or you could even be the next Oprah. Or you could do fashion, lifestyle, makeup, short films, comic videos. There's just so many things out there. Just try and think where your passion lies and what you want to do. If you're not passionate about something, you won't be able to sustain in it. But that's not to put you off to say that if you don't have anything specific that you want to do, you can't do anything at all in YouTube. I am the perfect example of it. All of my videos are very different. Each one is different from the other. But there is one main focus and one main goal in it, which is to add value to you. Whatever I share on YouTube, whatever I share out here publicly, is to add value to you, to give you hope, to support you, to give you an idea of maybe you can do something that I have been doing or maybe something that I have been struggling with. Even if you are like me, who's not necessarily pinned down a niche per se, it'll still help you progress and move further, which takes me on to the next point nicely, which is planning your content. Now, if you don't have a niche, if you don't have an idea of what you want to do, you're going to struggle to find a content on what you want to do. I started YouTube the exact opposite as to what everyone said how you should start. I just dived right in. I didn't do any research before I started recording video and uploading stuff on YouTube at all. I just wanted to do what I did. Two or three weeks after I started, I sat down and I tried to wreck my brain trying to find what I wanted to do, trying to find a niche, trying to think of what I want to do next and what to share. However, if you had a little bit of planning before you started recording your first ever video, it'll make things easier for you every week after that. It'll be easier when you plan your content around what you're going to do. When you have a content planned, 
It makes things easier for you to record your video. It's always best to record a few videos at one go and then you can take your time and edit it and release it whenever you want to. When you finish recording your first video, you would have gotten that momentum of recording, of sitting in front of a camera, talking, your words are far more fluent than it was when you first started recording that video. By the end of the half an hour, one hour or two hours or however long it takes for you to record a video, you're so used to talking in front of a camera that you want to keep going. So it makes it easier for the second video and the third video, depending on how much you can take for that day. You don't need to cram in as much if you can't. If you're comfortable talking just for one video and then stop and do another one next week or next day or whenever you want to, go ahead and do that. But this is generally an easy way to keep recording a few things so you have content, it saves you time. Especially when you have so many things on your plate. If you're working, you have family, you've got friends to catch up with and you have your own personal life and your free time and everything else basically. You want to try and plan your timing so you're not wasting time somewhere and so that you're being productive and you're using the time that you have um, efficiently. When you are planning your content and recording, do a test run. I can't stress this enough. What I would suggest is record something, edit the entire thing, play it a few times so you're used to it, so you can see how your entire frame looks like, how your setup looks like, how you look like. Are you looking at the lens? Are you looking elsewhere? Are you dreaming? Are you looking at the viewfinder, looking at yourself all the time and not at the lens itself, looking at people when you should be? There's a lot of things to it. I didn't do this at all. I only learned it, I think, a few weeks ago when I was editing some videos that I recorded. I was looking at it and I thought, oh no, I forgot to say something. I was slouching or I was staring at the viewfinder all along. I was staring somewhere else. Um, the frame isn't right. The lighting isn't right. There's so many things I noticed while I was editing and I didn't want to go back and do it again. It's not the end of the world, okay? Like I said, I mean... If your first video is perfect, it means that you've waited too long, okay? So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it gives you an idea of how the entire setup should be and how it'll look nice. Along the lines of planning your content, plan your timing on when you're going to shoot. That is extremely important depending on your location, the country that you're in, the type of house you live in or the location that you're shooting, basically. I don't use a lighting kit here. It's only my camera and you know the usual stand and microphone and everything. That's all I have. So I rely on daylight and I live in the UK where daylight is quite rare. The sun loves playing hide and seek so it comes in and out. Throughout this video you would have noticed that my lighting was all over the place. So when I started recording I set my lighting to a certain way to suit my frame and to suit the timing that I'm in now. But um, it was slightly cloudy when I first started. Now it's sunny. Uh, the dark clouds have seemed to disappear and the sun is going in and out now. And it's five o'clock while I'm recording this at the moment. So there are kids who are out and about running and playing outside, making some noise. So every time I hear them loud, I need to stop so that that doesn't interrupt this video. If you plan to record an extremely long video, or if you plan to record two or three videos at a sitting, relying on the sunlight, on natural light, don't start at six in the evening and expect to be finished by seven or eight even when it's still bright and sunny and everything is perfect. Nope, that's no go at all. Start earlier in the day so you have more time to play with and make sure you've checked the weather for that day. Make sure there's no thunderstorm at 5 in the evening when you start at 3 and you expect to do a few videos that's going to take you a couple of hours. I made that mistake with two of my videos. I was recording a cookie baking video. I think I started at about 2 in the afternoon but it took me such a long time to set up my camera and the tripod. I was using a wonky tripod at that time. So it was a bit crooked and I had to make it stand properly. I was only using my phone, so the lighting wasn't all that great. When I started, it was sunny and nice. But by the time I finished, it was already 7 or 8 in the evening because I took a break in between. I got really tired. I had to freeze stuff. I had to put it in the oven, let it cool. It took a good few hours for me to do it. And it took even longer because I was trying to fidget with the camera and the tripod throughout the entire process. So when I started the video, it was all bright and sunny and nice. By the time I finished it and I showed my final cookie, it was really dark and the video was so grainy. 
That's not ideal at all. That's not what you want to do. That's why you need to plan your timing properly. And the second one was when I was baking another cookie. I made gingerbread cookies and I was doing a stop motion video. Stop motion video is even more difficult when you're doing cooking especially. That took me a good few hours to set everything up again, to shoot all of the videos, to cook, let it cool, put it in the oven, bake it, cool, and then move everything bit by bit by bit by bit. It took a good few hours. The sun went in and out just like today. It didn't get dark. However, because of the sun going in and out behind the clouds, I had a lot of shadow in my entire video. I just used it and made it look as if it was natural anyway. If there's one thing I've learned, it's being mindful with the timing, for sure. Be mindful with your timing as to when you plan your shoots, when you're going to start and when you're going to finish. Consider all of those. If you've got a lighting kit with a proper YouTube room or studio or whatever, then that's fine. You don't have to worry about it so much. But you still need to plan your timing to accommodate that within your own day and your regular schedule. And the final point in this video is using tools to track your work. If you don't have a record of what you've uploaded, you're not going to be able to do the right thing for your own channel. You won't be able to progress everything or track everything that you've done. There are very high chances that you may be repeating what you've already spoken about, what you've already said, or you may be missing an entirely important chunk in between, which could be beneficial to someone else who was probably looking for it. I initially started off using Excel spreadsheet. I did my own template. I put in the dates and the columns and what I wanted to put in there, when I was filming, when I was editing, some of the ideas that I didn't want to forget and everything else. I found that that didn't really work for me because it was a manual template that I did myself. It didn't work when I wanted to change the dates and I didn't like the format of it. I didn't like to look at it that way. I wanted a page or a section where I could actually go in and see everything that I've uploaded. I could see how frequently I was uploading or when I was uploading and what dates I was putting stuff. So I wanted to look at it in a calendar format. Um, Google calendars didn't work for me for some reason. I just didn't like how it was and I was already using it for other purposes. It became really crowded for me so I didn't want to use Google Calendar. I then heard about Trello and Asana. I tried both out and I found that Asana works better for me purely because of the calendar format and everything else. I must admit though, I didn't try both for a very long time so I didn't know the in and out of everything. But from the basics that I knew, I found that Trello wasn't as nice as Asana was for me. As in, it wasn't really what I wanted with Trello as Asana was, basically. So I saw some videos on how to use Asana. I got confused. I didn't like it. Um, I didn't really understand the things that I saw on there and I didn't like it. I reverted back to my Excel spreadsheet and I didn't like it at all. So I was bent on making Asana work for me. So I sat and I tried to figure it out Eventually, I think I kind of figured it out. This may not be the right way on how to use Asana at all, but it's a way that works for me, so I've made it work that way. I'm using the free version of Asana. I find that you don't actually need to pay for the business version of Asana at all. You don't need a premium account to do whatever you need to do. Um, for whatever I am doing at the moment, it's only me. I don't have anyone else to share. I'm the one who manages everything. I'm the one who edits everything. I'm the one who plans everything. So... It's a one-man show that I'm running here, obviously, so I don't want to share it with anyone else. I just want it to look in a certain way. I have my own website where I blog every week, and then I have YouTube videos like this, and then I have stop-motion videos that I upload once a week also. So I wanted to manage all of these things where I was uploading once a week on each one of these categories, and I wanted to look at it in a calendar. I didn't understand how this was working, but then I eventually figured it out. I created three separate boards for each one, for YouTube, my blogs, and for stop motion. And then you can actually link it up to show it on a calendar. So I created a separate board to show as my social media calendar. Once I've input all of the things that I want to in each board separately, I then link it up to the calendar. And when I click on the calendar, I can then see everything on there. And I've categorized everything in different colors so I know which is which when I'm looking at it. I won't be talking you through on how to use Asana or Trello or anything else at all. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to point out that it's extremely important to track your work. There are a lot of apps and templates available for free. You don't have to pay for everything at all. If there are free material available that someone has produced for you, you can then make use of it and make it work for you. So just Google randomly for, you know, YouTube calendar template or Excel template or something like that. And someone will have something that you could use. 
use those and fill it in according to your own schedule and that will be beneficial for you. This will help you with your future planning, especially when you're serious about something that you put so much of time and effort into. It's really important that you're able to track all of your work in one place. I hope you found this information useful. I just want to tell you one piece of advice though before I finish. Don't be too hard on yourself. If your first video is so good that you have nothing else to improve, you've waited far too long. Just give it a go. Try something. Take a first step. Try it and then you can improve yourself. All the very best to you and I'll see you again soon. Bye!